Hey, what's up? I'm Forrest Griffin, UFC Hall of Famer, and more importantly, for the purpose of this tour that I'm about to give you, VP of Athlete Development for the Performance Institute. That would be the Performance Institute. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look around, and uh, we'll see what's to be seen. So what's this station? This is just where fighters can yeah, have some fuel in the pre, uh, pre and post workout. Good piece of design here. I think it's built off the locker room, so you don't uh, you don't have to you don't have any excuse not to get your you know, nutrition or like different snacks and stuff. I guess someone's in charge of keeping that stock. Oh yeah. I, I'm an amateur nutritionist and stuff. Uh, sort of side of the app, fill out your whereabouts. Cryotherapy, low level laser light therapy, not a tanning bed. What does that do, the low level? Uh, it reduces whole body inflammation. I was doing it for a while and I started sleeping better, so I quit. And how do you find the cryotherapy compared to ice baths? Uh, you know, I think I'm preferential to ice baths. The research will tell you that's a little better for your nervous system. I only did cryotherapy a couple times and it didn't feel like it was worth the 45 bucks. So, yeah, I felt like the, the 12 bucks for ice was a better deal. I tell you what though, it sucks less because it's three and a half minutes, whereas this is, you know, eight to 10. Three and three, we do a lot of the contrast baths. Oh, uh, this is the ice baths in here. Yeah, it's 50 degrees in there five. Steam, sauna, hydroworks treadmill. Uh, so that's for running in the water? Yeah, and then, you know, resistance running. It's pretty awesome, actually. So players will come here and cut weight and use the saunas. Yeah, as hard as they can. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, I think a lot of athletes get in the habit of signing after a workout. Just, I, I always like to turn over as much water in my body as I could. Yeah, if that makes sense, just to take down the water in and move through. Does that help your recovery? Did you find? Uh, recovery? No. No. Maybe, I mean, just with all the supplements you're taking. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's probably just good for your liver and stomach. Uh, so physical therapy, we do cupping, rehabbing, uh, cupping, instrument assisted soft tissue, dry needling, uh, as well as Pilates. You see the slam balls here? No pounds. How many physiotherapists do you have working here? Two. Two, yeah. Reinforced impact wall. Those hanger doors at the bottom open. You can do sprints, plyos, sleds. You know, we get we get a uh, strength staff of four permanent and uh, three permanent and one intern right now. So it's pretty awesome. And this is all the weight and cardio stuff. Yeah, we'll peek in here for start. So we have private rooms in the back. I don't know if you ever seen a biodex. No, I haven't. So you can do an exercise and it basically tells you, you know, percentages left, right. Oh, that's pretty cool. So if you have an injured arm or something, like you Yeah, you can tell, you know. So that's a dual energy x-ray, the gold standard body composition, does your bone density as well. So it's very precise. Uh, yeah. Find out where the fighters are at injury-wise. So. I blew my left knee out a couple times. I have 2.1 pounds less muscle in my left leg than my right. And on that thing, I was my my left hamstring. My quads were actually pretty similar, but my left hamstring was 39% uh, weaker than my right. My hamstring in my left leg always hurts. And you know, for like a week I did like corrective movement stuff and a lot of balance and proprioceptive stuff. And it was hard, so I quit. I might have made it two weeks. I seem to have about a two week lifespan of everything. You know, I'm yeah, like, get eh, it's boring. It's there. So these are weights. 
I'm guessing you know how weight for it. Yeah. Got what, four or five squat racks? Yep, just the four. So we are not a D1 football team. And you notice, you see this a lot in new facilities, space. So this isn't, you know, offensive lineman, defensive lineman type training. This is, you know, your body in space. And then all these hanging doors open, you got your turf area to do, you know, metabolic conditioning circuits or whatever fun folk construction shit you're into. But the cool piece here is uh, the bilateral force, force plates and the elite form cameras. So it tells you how much weight you're moving, how fast. So, you know, the bars, the speed of movement can be as important as like the absolute, like, you know, how much weight you're moving. And then force plates. So it tells you jump, uh, counter movement, strength, you know. So they're actually measuring when you push off into the floor and that load and explosion gives you a rate of force development, power profile, all these things, this is what we use to, or this is what the strength team uses to write the programs, you know, where are you deficient, where are you strong, uh, you know. Are you stay, still able to work out here like on I, I, I do, uh, I, I do, I work out usually most mornings in here for about an hour. 90 minutes all in, but you know, moving, just waking up. So yeah, that's it though. I try not to work out too much. I My new strategy is to work out now at 40. Like I want to be working out when I'm still 60. Yeah. You know, so like I said, I just did the high yoga this morning, high Pilates actually. I'm, I'm uh, last time I, I did uh, trap bar deadlift, not regular deadlift, but trap bar. My back hurt for two days and I said, man, fuck. You know, so I, I'm gonna start, I guess not going too much heavier than my body weight on uh, squats and trap bar deadlifts. And I only lift like twice a week. You mostly can, cardio, I guess, and stretching? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll do like lighter, you know, movement stuff, uh, proprioceptive drills, you know, quickness type stuff, track workouts. Do you still do any like uh, fight conditioning just to I, I hit mitts and yeah. I do bag work, it's, it's fun. Uh, this is the lab. This is where Dr. Dre went with his pen and his pad. No, uh, so it's a hypoxic chamber, you know, hypoxic chamber sim simulates uh, high altitude, low oxygen. Ultra G treadmill uh, over there, that guy. So bubble wrap treadmill type deal. Uh, heart monitors, VO2 max, blood lactate threshold analysis, science. So every fighter that comes in here to train is going to get tested on all of this. Well, if you yeah, if you have this equipment, why not build a profile of your strengths and weaknesses to design a plan moving forward? You know, uh, if you think about like any sort of skills combine, this is this is a physical prep combine. Like where are you at physical? You know, what's your injury history? What's your training history? Um, so it's, you know, otherwise you're kind of just getting a cookie cutter plan. And the thing about our sport, or the thing about MMA as opposed to other sports, if you think about you played football, basketball, any of those? Amateur wrestling pretty much, and rugby. Okay, so no. All right. Um, they know exactly, even, even in wrestling, you know exactly what physical attributes you want to highlight, right? So all defensive ends train, to, all short stops need the same skill set. Every fighter is different, so every fighter has to kind of build their own profile. That makes sense. Who are some of the best pound for pound athletes that uh, have come through here? So that, that's another thing. We, uh, well that, that, that first wing over there is all HIPAA compliant, but I don't know. I don't know of any idea. I mean, that's all. So we do. We've collected over, you know, 31,000 data points, over 350 profiles from athletes, and they're all anonymized and normalized. So I've never been able to tell you who's the best athlete, who's not. I mean, I can right. guess, but I would be guessing. I don't know their their numbers. What I want to know more importantly is what's the bell curve of a 205 pound male strength. You know, what's what's the counter movement jump looking like what's their reactive index type type numbers you know so so you can kind of gauge yourself 
against the other people that you're potentially fighting. So okay. which, you know, otherwise you think about, hey, you know, this guy's, you're, you're scared to get tested because you're going to have a bad day, right? Yeah. Has Brock Lesnar been in here yet for the testing? Or? No, no, no. I'd imagine he'd be pretty fucking strong on that. What about uh, CM Punk? No, no, no. Definitely, definitely. Here we go. I'm gonna grab my water. Oh, Use the snacks here. I'm gonna put all. I'll put away. This is a very cool uh, a VP of operations where contenders become champions and champions become legends. So it's pretty cool. A lot of the branding and stuff, uh, the, the people that are actually in the facility came up with. So this is the Hall of Fame wall, I see. Mm -hmm. It is. What do you think about uh, Art Davy being named for the Hall of Fame this week? I think it's pretty awesome, man. He was in here, I got to talk to him. He's a really cool cat. I liked him, I thanked him. Who's your uh, favorite Hall of Famer? Um, probably Big Nog. Yeah. And, I mean, just, I mean, Randy Couture, you know, Chuck Liddell I actually had personal close relationships with, and Randy helped me quite a bit throughout my career. But, uh, Big Nog was the kind of guy, the first guy I was like, man, that's, you know, I wanted to pattern myself after him. Yeah. What about Dan Severin? Oh yeah, so I just, I just talked to him. Um, he was, we just had him in here uh, doing some stuff not too long ago, so that was cool. I got, uh, my, it's my goal to get a picture of everybody next to their Hall of Fame picture. <laughs> yeah, I got to wrestle him once and I asked him about his uh, match with you. But I guess it was like one of your first matches. Oh yeah. He had fond memories though. Yeah, he's, so I met him, I met him in 2005 at an expo and he had no idea we'd ever fought. No idea. Yeah. Well, you were pretty skinny at that point too, I guess. Dude, I, I was, yeah, I was working, uh, well, I was still like 230, but I was working, uh, I was actually thinner then than when I was trying to make light heavyweight, yeah. I was working uh, full-time nights as a cop, and you just don't eat much, you know? Yeah. You're just like, you know, it's funny, you know, I was like, fuck, I'm going to heavyweight. And then I got skinnier, and that's what happens. I got a light heavyweight, and I started gaining weight. I was like, the mind is a terrible thing. Yeah. Um, power cubes, force output measurement, somebody's been using it. This isn't, that's funny, I was, I guess I wasn't here, I was here Friday, so this room's like different. And I left it. People working out, how to do that. So obviously an octagon, Vicon cameras, which are the motion capture, you know, the fancy dance cameras. Uh, and then we have regular uh, cameras so you can watch your playback right there. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to send it on thumb drives. But those files are huge because there's three high def cameras that we have to send. So. And who are those sent to? The people that review everything? Or? No, I mean they're, the they're sent to whoever, what, whatever fighter wants to record and do them, and then everything's destroyed. And that's that's my job. I take it seriously. Again, talk about you know I want to got a a guy or gal to come in and feel totally comfortable, you know, sharing their injury history or whatever, and knowing that that's not going anywhere. Because uh, I mean, you know, as a you know former fighter myself, I would be like. Nah, you know, the second I hear that our oh, information's getting out, no way. Yeah. But so I, I don't know any of that. That's the easiest way. You know, it's like I don't need to know that. Well, then our physical therapists and nutritionists are actually uh, hip uh, bound by HIPAA. But weight is not medically sensitive information. But anything that has to be like diagnosed or tested. Uh, that is medically sensitive information. There's the uh, outdoor sprint track, which I used for some reason the other day, and my hamstring still hurt. I was doing, uh, I was running in sub five, 30s, 30 yard dash. You don't know about the 30 yard dash. It's really going to be the, the new marker. So beautiful campus. 
I guess there's no dorms here yet. No, there's not gonna be. No. No, that's. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, you see, just we we, we we thought about that sort of thing. It was just becomes really tough, you know. I, I also want people to have to, you know, have a little skin and game, go through a hotel, whatever. Because, like I said, once you step on campus, breakfast, lunch, dinner, pre-post workouts, you know, everything's free. Sub laundry, you do want that out. And did you, did you bring a couple of mouthfuls too? This is all the CrossFit type stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah. Pre-activation, you know. Ninja Warrior. I prefer Ninja Warrior stuff. I was thinking about um, maybe getting like a kettlebell thing here. Just because I personally like them. What's the best kettlebell exercise for uh, for an MMA fighter? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I do not know. Maybe, maybe some variation of a clean. Okay. You know, a heavy, you know, Catch type Olympic, almost like an Olympic bastardized Olympic movement. But that's what I do with them because I don't, I never do Olympic movements. Why is that? Just harder on the body? No, no. I mean, if you do them right, I don't think they're that hard on the body. I just never did them. Okay. And then when you've been lifting your whole life and you suck at something, you don't want to start it. So, auditorium over here. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Hi man. How you doing? We're just doing a tour, man. What else would I be doing? <laughs> what else would I be doing? Yeah, working. So that's our head of performance. This is where no magic has literally ever happened. emails on Sunday. Relentless. Yeah, you can tell I, I'm going to try to like make this part like of the uh, room like almost a little bit nice. Just so when you're walking past it doesn't look so lonely. I made one of the commercials for Far Cry 5. Did you really? Yeah, the, the prank commercial. I don't know if it is. That's cool. It's on the YouTube site. So yeah, they like played out a scene to like unsuspecting people that came into this bar. You're a video game player, I guess? No, not at all. You just like the skull? I was just like, they were like, hey, does anybody want this? And I was like, yeah. And then I broke it. <laughs> so, I was not trash. What, what do you guys want to do this interview? How about right here? Yeah, that'd be good. What is this office anyway? It's just like a... Uh, no, it's just a lounge. Lounge, yeah. You know, maybe a lounge. Athlete. We had a couple of the athlete lounges, but just place to hang out in between and stuff. So that was the UFC Performance Institute, and now that you've had the tour, you're ready for professional fighting.